Hi cuties and welcome to a book tour! Uh, I was asked by the wonderful Eric at Break Even Books to participate in this book tour of reading and reviewing The Secret Life of Sophonispa Anguissola. I am really bad about that pronunciation, but it's also fun to say Sophonispa Anguissola. This is the most famous woman you've never heard of. And that's quite true. Like, this sent me down a Wikipedia rabbit hole after reading this book, and during reading this book, to be honest. Uh, this is a historical fiction, and that's one of the many genres that I like to read. I don't read a ton of it because I don't tend to drift towards, like, the saturation of World War II, kind of. That that seems to be what, what a lot of historical fiction is. But I love historical fiction that is outside of that realm, and that's what this is. This is 16th century Italy and Spain uh, with Sophonispa Anguissola. It is her life as a portraitist. Is that the right word? She does portraits. Portraitist? I think that's right. Her journey basically through life of learning how to paint and having this natural gift for it, going through her with her, not schooling, but mentorships, because at the time women were not allowed to do it, but she had a super awesome dad who supported her through the way. She even apprenticed under Michelangelo and became a court level portraitist uh, in the kingdom, in, in kingdom, in Spain, uh, for the king of Spain. Once I was the king of Spain, now I eat humble pie. Wow. That took me way, way back. That's Moxie Fruvis, one of my favorite acapella bands. Anyway, not relevant to this video. And it is her journey. There is romance, there is drama, there is intrigue. And it's really, really interesting. It took me a long time to read it though. I, I, I will say it took me a bit to get into this one, uh, but also I was reading it as an ebook, which as we know, I don't do well with. So that's not a fault of the book, that's a fault of this brain. Also, August was a hectic month. But with The Secret Life of Sophonisa Anguissola, this was very nice. If you're a fan of kind of biopic stuff, if you liked Kaikei, if you liked Ariadne, that style prose, then you'll probably like this. I've seen it also compared to Seven Lives of Evelyn Hugo, but I've never read that and I don't care to. But it is in the style of kind of an interview at first and at the end. Uh, so if you have ever seen the movie Ever After, where the Grimm brothers go and interview the, I guess, I don't, the Queen of France, and she's like, this is the real story of Cinderella. That moment, that's the vibe it was giving me. And I was not mad about it, that was great. I liked it that we were also trying to figure out a lie. So she's talking with this young artist uh, who wants to hear about her life. And she says, all right, I'm gonna tell you something, but there's going to be one lie and it's your job to figure out what the lie. So us as the reader are also trying to figure out what is the lie. Very interesting, especially at the end. I will not spoil, of course, go read it yourself. Uh, but I really, really liked it. The beginning of the book, we have Sophonispa with uh, her siblings and her little kind of battling it out with one of her sisters, Minerva. Uh, and seeing the dynamic of the family, seeing the dynamic between her and her father, who is, you know, extremely liberal in this case, in that he supports his daughters having education and supports Sophonispa with her painting, which again, was not a thing for women at the time. They could not do that. So he ends up taking her all the way to Rome to study and find her a new mentor because she has a mentor as a kid, kind of has a little crush on him, uh, but then they move forward and they just become kind of pen pals. But what's great is you get this little kind of momentary, not romance, but this faded meeting while they're on a stop in Rome and you meet this character and you don't know his name, but he's like rugged gambler, you know, the bad boy, but he's really sweet, right? And they have this moment and he gives her this coin and says, hold on to this. And we are both going to go out into the world and make something of ourselves. And he's like, I'm determined to see you as you'll one day be this famous painter. He has no doubt in her and he's gonna go off to the sea and seek his fortune and stuff. And so they kind of make this pact. And I thought that was really nice. I liked that moment because it didn't have to be full on like, meet a stranger and sleep with him because that does not happen, FYI. This is a clean book. Um, <laughs> well, there's a, like a miniature amount of spice, I would say. It's, for me and my ace heart, it's perfect. 
I've acquired a bird. After this faded meeting, it kind of always sits in the back of her mind about what is this sailor doing? What's what's he going on with his life? Will she ever see him again? You don't know. She goes and she meets Michelangelo, studies under him, and then also gains a lot of notoriety with her portraitness. Portraitness? Portrait? I, that is, why is this such a hard word? I don't know why it's a hard word. It just is, Mambo. Can you say portraitist? Portraitist? No, you can't. So don't make fun of me. She gains this notoriety and the attention of the King of Spain. And to which she meets Alba. And Alba is another POV that we get. And this is what I super loved about this book. Was getting a POV, a second POV, from this man who is, you know, horribly in love with, with Sofonispa. Uh, but also he is a very dark character. He's not a good guy. He, he kind of is a good guy, but he's not a good guy. All right. He's got a little bit of forever alone vibes, you know? <laughs> He's got those vibes. Uh, he's much older than Sofonispa, but he takes her uh, and has her basically audition for him because he's looking for the, a, a portraitist to do all these massive amount of portraits uh, for the King of Spain. And she hangs out uh, at his, you know, his place and, and does all the portraits and they, they form a good rapport. Uh, he is head over heels for her, but he's like, I won't do any of that. I'm gonna, you know, step away uh, and not involve her in the darkness. He's Mick, he's Broody McBroody, okay? But eventually he's like, I have to go back to Spain. I don't wanna leave her, taking her with. And she becomes the court portraitist. She befriends the queen of Spain, Elizabeth, and enter our main crazy villain, Don Carlos, who is the son of King Philip, uh, the first son because he's remarried now to Elizabeth uh, and he is a problem. Problem child. Very threatening, very sinister. This is where I was like, oh, man, I'm reading so much. Ah. This is where it really picked up for me. So it took a while for me to get invested into the book but once we get to Spain it takes off like that. We get all kinds of intrigue and here's where I want to stop uh, telling you what the book is about because there's so much that could spoil it, but there's a ton of stuff that goes on for Sofonispa aside from just, you know, being at court, you know, things at court, court's never cool. If I were ever in, like, a time traveled into the past, I would be like, nope, I'm not going to court. I'm staying in the middle of the woods away from that. I'm not into court intrigue. <laughs> I would not survive in court. <laughs> but it's so good. Like, oh, I was so invested in how this was going to go. I was like, is Sofonispa and Alba going to get together? Is Sofonispa going to do something with this this guy? Is this going to happen? Is she going to, like, flee? Like, what's going to happen? You don't know. So you can't quite pick it out of where this is going. And it keeps going in places you're not quite sure. Now, this is the point where I'm like, I gotta check Wikipedia for a second and kind of verify. And the great thing is, at the end of the book, there is editorial notes about, like, what was fact, what was, what liberties were taken for the fiction, for the narrative, and a lot of it is this, this is the, the hardcore facts. There's very few liberties taken. There's a few timeline stuff taken. And then like, she actually had like seven siblings. So she just narrowed it down to five. What I was most sad about was that once she has really left her family, we never go back to them. We hear about them a little bit, but we don't get to go back and have a confrontation or anything, especially with her younger brother, which I would have loved for her to show up and just Shut up, child. Another reason why this is not like a full-on five-star read for me is I do think Sofonispa was a little tiny bit naive. She did a wee bit naive, especially near the end when there is a poison plot, okay? There's a problem with some poison, and for the reader, I feel like it's super obvious who done it, but Sofonispa is like, I gotta give them another chance. They're just sad. They're just angry at this, and it's not, they definitely didn't do that. It definitely wasn't actually a plot to kill me. Girl. Girl! Overall, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this book. I love the ending of this. I love how it wraps up when we get back to the the interview portion. I, I just think it's so fun. I honestly think like 
this is this gotta be a next like HBO Netflix show kind of thing like there's so much drama and so much time in this that easily you could make this a couple seasons long you you could do a lot with this and I'm, I think somebody someone should pick it up HBO I think you should pick it up although I don't trust HBO to not make it super like over spicified <laughs> so maybe paramount <laughs> but i would really love to see this visually done even like a stage play or something in opera Ooh, an opera Ooh, that would be fun i think it's 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 got that flair to it that uh, that opera could could take hold and do that so thank you very much for including me on this book tour if you guys want to check out this book all the links are going to be in the description the book tour is going on all this week so i will also link some of the other people's areas that this uh, book will be featured you can learn a little bit more about it uh but i'm really grateful to have been able to take part and read this awesome book that i probably wouldn't have heard about otherwise so fantastic thank you and as usual if you have any questions or comments you can leave them down below or on all the social medias i'm gonna go now bye hi cuties oh <coughs> hello voice hey no chewing on the walls we do not chew on walls, especially when we're talking about Sophonis by Anguissola. Sit here. Okay. You must stop. Look at the camera and tell them what you've done.